What's good, guys? Welcome back to our weekly market recap. This is obviously the end of the week, and of course, I'm being joined with my good friend Leo. What's good, Leo? Hey, uh, it's been a pretty chill week this week. Not too much uh, extreme news events like NFP, FOMC, or whatever. So that, in hindsight, made for a pretty smooth week in terms of order flow. I had a lot of fun following around uh, all the markets we covered this week. And um, I think it's a good, good week to end off on. Feeling good. That's good. That's good. I agree. You know, this week was one of the more normal weeks of trading, you know, very standard. Um, if you guys haven't already seen our other videos, right, we gave our weekly analysis or outlook, and then we gave you guys a midweek uh, review or update. And then now is the market recap where we go over how the week closed and what we expect, um, potentially expect going to next week, right? But as of right now, we're going to be going over the dollar index, uh, starting with dollar index. And of course, we are also launching our Discord um, completely free. It's going to be in our description below. Hope you guys can find that you know, useful for you for you guys. And if you guys have any questions, that would be the place where you guys can message Leo and I. And Leo and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. But you know, do, do understand we have our lives outside of trading, but we will try to be very active in the discord to reply to you know most if not all your questions and concerns but i will say go yeah go ahead um, i will say this is still a work in progress so if you guys have any uh thing you guys would like us to work on it in the server any uh, concerns any helpful suggestions i'm more than happy or alan and i am more more than happy to uh, take note and implement good changes on the server yeah, of course. Yes, yes, definitely. So yeah, don't be afraid to speak up or have any suggestions. You know, Leo and I, first time doing this and we, we, we're obviously still learning. Um, but yeah, let's get started into the dollar index. So the dollar index, as of right now, it closed, um, kind of coming down. And as I stated in the beginning of the week, you know, I was like, this high's in jeopardy. I'm looking for these highs up here. Price didn't really get up to that high and then create a swing high, starting coming lower. I think the swing high here is very suspicious, in my opinion. I think price can definitely come up, take out that high starting off next week. And then maybe from there, we can see potential bearishness. Or if it takes out that high, it doesn't seem any you know any uh, chance of slowing down. It can easily run for these highs up here or even these highs up here. But as of right now, right, end of the week, not trying to forecast too much. Just going to wait until market opens and get a little bit more information. But yeah, as of right now, I do like how Dixie ran up higher here, taking out buy side, trading up higher. This These highs do look in jeopardy, like I said. But as of right now, it can either either trace lower, trade into this inefficiency here and here. Or it can just kind of keep punching higher, forcing uh, more buy side to be uh, taken out. But that should be... It on Dixie. Did you have anything you want to add for Dixie, Leo? Uh, I, it could just consolidate for a little longer because it's it's a little fifty fifty right now to be to to me in my eyes. Because in my op opinion, it could you know go a little lower, just a tad lower un under the low, and then move higher. But you know, it, to me, uh, I'll, I'll wait for the Monday to give us more information. Yeah, most definitely. So just be aware, you know, markets are not in the best conditions at the moment. So just be careful with that and, you know, just wait for more information, wait for more confirmations before you guys jump into your analysis or trade. So let's move on from Dixie. We have EU and daily. Similarly, um, you know, or similarly that we expect Dixie to go higher. I'm looking for EU to go lower here. And if Dixie consolidates, you can probably consolidate as well, or even retrace higher into this inefficiency here before maybe you continue going lower or just moving higher and start running out buy side, where then Dixie would be starting to uh, run out sell side. But as of right now, we're kind of in this position in market where we want to wait a little bit more for more information, took out sell side here, right trading into a lower level of discount. Want to give it some time to really, you know, give us a little uh, more information on what it wants to do. So again, just be careful, just wait, you know, practice patience. And then uh, we'll update you guys on our weekly outlook on Monday. But as of right now, yeah, EU closed nicely, you know, really nice running lower, taking out that uh, sell side liquidity while Dixie ran out buy side. So we do see correlated markets. So as of right now, we're just going to wait and see what um, Dixie and EU does. Let's move on to GU. So GU obviously does not look 
as good as uh, Dixie or EU. Um, EU here is very choppy, I would say, you know, a lot of consolidation here. And I'm expecting maybe potentially a move higher or lower in, you know, coming up in the next week. Um, but, or, you know, or it can just consolidate for next week as well. I wouldn't be surprised if it want to do that. But as of right now, I am personally looking for these lows to get taken out here. And if it really gets dramatic or, uh, you know, exaggerated, it can come down for these lows down here. Um, but as of right now, there is still buy side up in the market. I noticed that it cleared these level of buy side here. So I'm looking for a potential um, run towards the sell side here or even down here as a probability. But like I said, market R is very choppy. So be careful with that. So I wouldn't overstay my welcome. If you catch, you know, 40, 50 pips on your run, I think that's more than enough for the day. I know this drop here is about 200 drop, 200 pips drop. So a lot of people might be tempted to hold that. But like I said, as of right now, markets are very dangerous to trade. And you know, not very too not not too high probability. So if you are able to catch something in the market, I think that should be a good sign to just hey take that. Maybe wait a little bit more for a better sub to come up. But for G, like I said, I think it can run down for these lows down here. And um, if that does happen, I'm looking for obviously Dixie to run a uh, very aggressively higher, taking out those highs that we mentioned earlier. Did you have anything you want to add for EUGU, Leo? Uh, no, nothing on the forexes for me. Okay, okay. let's let's move on from uh, forex then. All right, on to crude oil futures. So as you guys, if you guys have followed along uh, throughout the week uh, on Monday and Wednesday's video, I did forecast uh, crude oil. And I'm delighted to say that um, the analysis did plan out as I've kind of outlined it. And uh, I'm expecting it to continue into buy side liquidity um, as we move forward into the last, is it the last week of, eh, sort of the last week of January, it's the last full week. So um, just a bit more in depth and to recap, uh, I built my framework off of the uh, weekly order block here and then refined it with the order block daily here. We see a price was very choppy here in this range. But given that the time frame that was consolidating in, I was expecting some move expansion. Um, and um, it gave us that this week here, uh, moving into February, which to me is, uh, I should expect order flow to be more smooth. So this was nice to see. Um, so I did mention that we would trade into the consequent encroachment of this wick here. And the, we see that the bodies uh, are respecting that we did get wick over it a little bit but it's nice to see that uh this daily uh pdra was respected all right moving into the hourly you can see that i didn't want to cloud up the chart too much uh, i think this is already a lot for us and so um keeping this in mind that we did take out this social liquidity allowing price to run higher into this premium here and so I did mark out this little imbalance here, as well as I did mention, I didn't mark out, but I did mention the uh, wick here, the middle of the wick being traded to. We see that in Thursday's trading here, after a reaccumulation into this imbalance here, uh, moving higher into it. We kind of sit here for a little bit and we run into, I didn't mark this out because I didn't want to clutter it too much, but this um, sell side imbalance by side inefficiency here, if you guys mark this out, and draw your fib through this high here hits the middle of it exactly and rejects so it, re it rejects into a temporary discount here which is the uh bullish order block opening here uh which i like the the bias for my long isn't invalidated by this moving here i see it as like a really nice uh pyramid stacking entry if you're like you swing trading this thing um it's I see a nice setup forming here for a long. So uh it depends how we trade in this range of price here, this these few PD arrays here. If price keeps moving down really, really fast, then okay, my bias for the bullish stance would be weakened or invalidated. So uh that depends on next week's trading. However, 
this doesn't invalidate anything is I like where price is sitting in here at to another week. It delivered on the upside and then it's coming down a little bit. Um, I like, I really did like this uh, AM accumulation move here um, to note. And that should be everything just to recap off the week. I'll do more in depth of forecasting on the uh, Outlook video. Uh, did you have anything to add on crude oil, Alan? Uh, yeah, just a, just um, want to note that I did just notice now that maybe it could run for this low here. Um, I do expect these buys to be taken out. Um, at the moment, I do think this is still in a level of premium. And I think they would want to maybe come lower into the level this of, uh, yeah, that low there. Um, they yeah, they didn't couldn't. fully fill it in. Yeah, that that yeah. is what uh drew my eyes in as I saw this chart, but let's just wait and see. Um, I do can I do can see also see that they can just use that short term discount that they just created, uh, with that order block at seventy three thirteen. They can just use that and uh push price higher um into buy sell liquidity. I would not be surprised if they did that, but if they if they did you know retrace a little bit lower, I wouldn't you know. In my opinion, I don't think it would invalidate your bias of uh, bullishness. But yeah, I do agree that we should just kind of wait to see how they trade either higher or lower from that level. And um, yeah, let's wait and see for that. Let's not push too hard, right? Yeah, great insight. Yeah, thank you. All right, moving on to E-mini S&P. Just to give a little higher time frame uh, look at what price has done throughout the week. So this is the weekly range here. Uh, this was Wednesday. This was this week's price action here. A little swoop into the discount here, and then a, an expansion higher into buy side liquidity. Uh, nothing too um, crazy here on the chart. So just a reaccumulation. All right. Uh, into the hourly chart, we have um, a better view of what price did this week. We see that in the beginning of the week, we ran lower into taking out this sell side here, which we marked in our Outlook video, this one, this one, and uh, potentially into this uh, PDRA here and this imbalance here. Uh, we see that price did trade into that in, on Thursday and then swiftly uh, took over and expanded onto the upside here into buy side liquidity and beyond. Uh, we are expecting all-time highs to be taken out soon. However, to open the week, I would expect some sort of retracement into this range. I don't think they'll uh, push as far as to just rock it up on the open. Um, so I'm expecting a bit of uh, this imbalance range here to be made efficient. Um, not too much to discuss on the hourly chart here. It's a really clean market maker buy model. And yeah, I I'm, I was very happy with this. Yeah, any thoughts, Alan? Yeah, um, played out almost perfectly to what we uh, drew out uh, for this week, right? We drew out that they were gonna hunt for South Side in the beginning of the week and which they did do and then look for a buy side near the end of the week. So I'm very, very happy that it's played out the way we anticipated to. Um, but this is also, you know, like, like Leo said, it's now in a level of low probability for us to continue to trade. All we can really do is kind of give our analysis and want to wait because it's already, in my opinion, a level of premium. So yeah. if it's like, you know, like uh, the price run up all the way to like the highs right now, that's 48.69. So it's in a level of premium on a higher time frame. So it is very, I don't want to say risky, but it's a little more riskier to want to uh, be uh, continue going long. So I think as of right now, if you guys didn't catch a good move lower before I ran up those highs, I think now should not be the time to chase bulls, right? Like if you are wanting to chase bullish prices, I, like Leo said, recommend you to wait for that retracement lower if it does happen. And then uh, you maybe can get some uh, nice runs higher for all-time highs. Um, uh, I would like to just point out the OTE here mm -hmm. on uh, this low to this high perfectly into that OTE range. And then just runs. It was nice. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks very, very clean. Very, very, very clean run. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the NAS, right? Very similar to ES. Um, NAS, we saw nice runs higher, nice runs higher. The trade lower here, right? Trading into a level of the short-term discount, price runs higher, stop run, right? Running out that low um, that we talked about running out that low and then we have very nice bullish prices pushing higher for buy side liquidity and it's also moving up into all-time highs um that's not on the chart but if you go into just the nas itself like nas 100 you don't use the contracts just use the nas uh you should see that's really really close to the all-time highs and that should be the next target i'm gonna just say that right now but anything can happen i am anticipating maybe some manipulation around that level um, but not too much. I think it should be a very clean run into it, taking it out and then uh, establishing that as a, you know, potentially the new high for the year. And then we'll see what happens after that. If they want to continue going higher, then we'll just anticipate that run higher. So a lot of time is you gotta, just gotta have to be, uh, be careful and just wait for prices. And you just take this, look, look at this run here. It's very, it's been very, very bullish. And a lot of people who are catching these, are saying, they can try to short here get punished right and then you can start seeing like it's been very very bullish right the only very like the only uh retracement that is noticeable would be this one here and then uh this one here was very aggressive obviously everyone was unsure what was going on and then now we have this run higher here solidifying that okay the bull run is not over and they're still pushing higher for buy side so like i said it's very or i'm going to say it's riskier to try to want to long up here because you are going to be long into um the buy side that's probably been taking out so just be a note just be aware of that right if you guys could and i recommend maybe just lower your risk or don't or just wait a few you know if you wait a few days or a few weeks until everything solidifies and see what nas or the other future pairs want to do um but yeah nothing too crazy on nas great week you know we anticipated the highs be taking on es and nas we got that done we anticipated the the stop run here which was beautiful so after times like that, we want to, you know, take some time away, right? It's very, very, like I said, risky um, trying to trade into the uh, bias of getting bullish because we are in level of premium. But, um, but yeah, I think that should be it for NAS and that should be it for our market recap. Um, like we said, Discord is open. If you guys want wanting to join, it's completely free. The link will be in the description below. We're like Leo said earlier, we are still currently working on it, updating it. And if you have any suggestions, we'll be more than happy to hear you guys out. But um, yeah, is there anything else you want to add for them, Leo? Join up, guys. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll see you guys on, in our Discord. And if you guys don't want to join, that's good. That's okay too. We're still gonna be making these videos for you guys on YouTube. So um, really up to you guys. We're not, you know, holding you guys saying, hey, you should join, but it's going to be free. If you need, if you have questions or anything, that's will be where we'll be answering most of our questions for you guys. It'll be a lot easier to access us um, just because uh, I know people drop comments here and not and people are kind of more shy on YouTube. So it's okay. You know, if you want a more private area, then, you know, Discord will be the place where we'll be answering your questions and, uh, you know. If any questions or concerns you guys have, we'll be more than happy to you know, take a look at your chart or just uh, share your analysis with us. We'll be more than happy to talk to you guys there. But that should wrap up our video. We'll see you guys on Discord or in Discord. And if you guys are not joining Discord, then we'll see you guys on our weekly Outlook video on Monday. Yeah, Peace. see you guys on the next video. Take care, you guys.